Hey y'all little blasters, my name is Gente, and today we are going to be covering the four main aspects of the art of Fury Prop. Talent spec, gearing, playstyle, and consumables. Let's charge straight in. If you have any questions about the guide or where you're tanking, join me on my stream. Links just below. But for now, let's go. First off, we need to talk about if Fury Pro over Deep Pro is right for you and your guild, because in a lot of cases, it's not. Going Fury Pro could be a bad move for your guild and your raid team, but if done correctly in the right circumstance, it will really give your guild an unreal chance to grow and will allow your DPS to blast the meters and show you what they're made of. I would recommend trying out Fury Pro if you are currently Deep Pro and you feel like your raid DPS are stealing aggro from you or you are very, very close to losing threat on a lot of bosses. Personally, I think it is important to step away from the mentality of telling DPS to do less damage. There is no point in gearing them up and giving them extra gear if you are ultimately going to tell them to watch threat too much and drop DPS. With more DPS, bosses die faster which puts less strain on the healers, and it also creates a more enjoyable raid environment. Nobody wants to be told to do less DPS. At the end of the game, one of the most exciting things about raiding is the competition of being the best DPS. Here are a few of the main positives and negatives to going Fury Pro over Deep Pro. Negatives Less shield uptime will cause you to take more damage on a boss fight, especially on certain mechanics like Broodlord's Mortal Strike. Once you become comfortable with the Fury Tank playstyle, you will become much more effective at bringing out your shield and mitigating some of these hard hitting abilities. On most boss fights, you don't need to be sitting there using dual wield weapons for the whole duration of the fight. Learn to bring out your shield when it is required and make your healer's lives easier. Loss of Tactical Mastery This is something that is often overlooked when entering into the Fury Pro playstyle, but is something that is felt immediately. Losing that ability to jump into Berserker Stance and Intercept, being able to jump into Berserker Stance for Fear Immunity and keep a portion of your Rage, being able to jump into Battle Stance for a Mocking Blow, really affects this playstyle, but there are workarounds. Say for example you are fighting Ragnaros, and you know there is a possibility that you could get knocked back. Hold on to your Blood Rage, and if you are quick enough, you can jump into Berserker Stance, pop Blood Rage, and Intercept back. The same goes for Mocking Blow. If you know there is an opportunity for Mocking Blow to come about, save your Blood Rage for a Mocking Blow. More focus and skill is required to play the spec properly. This is not necessarily a bad thing, but is something that must be considered. If you are new to the game and new to tanking, I do not recommend this spec. If you are just going to be running dungeons instead of raids, I do not recommend this spec. If you are going to be raiding an environment that is very relaxed, and does not require a high threat output, I don't recommend this spec, it's not the right one for you. In these situations, it is much more likely you will perform a better job in deep prop. Also, the gear requirements to play the spec properly are much higher than deep prop. That being said, everyone is welcome to try this spec, and I hope this guide helps take you to where you want to be. It is much more enjoyable than playing deep prop, and I love it. Here are some of the positives that come with Fury Prot tanking over Deep Prot tanking. Threat Generation With the correct gear and the correct rotation, the threat generation is insane. The skill cap is much much higher and you will see yourself critting for up of 2k bloodthirsts, turn that into threat from defensive stance and defiance, nobody's pulling aggro off that. Okay, maybe some people. Once you have mastered the rotation and you are comfortable with the Fury Prop playstyle, you will be using your shield a lot. The spec is all about gaining a threat lead. If you're fighting Chromagus and the boss is 50% health and your closest DPS threat wise is 50%, there is no reason in staying dual wield and pumping out more threat for no reason. It is very unlikely at that stage that someone's going to pull aggro off you if you swap to a shield and continue a solid rotation. You can start working shield block into your rotation at that point and mitigate a lot of the damage incoming. This means if there is a mistake with a Trank, 
you are going to feel it a lot less and you can give your healers breathing room. This also means when the boss gets to 20% health and goes for a further enrage, you are ready to pop shield wall and mitigate even more damage and smooth the fight out for your healers and your DPS. And if for some reason a DPS does start climbing due to a vulnerability, all you have to do is bring out your dual wield set of swords and pump the threat again. It's as simple as that. Do damage, don't die. GG. The Rotation Personally, I find playing Deep Prot in a raid unbelievably boring when you compare it to the Fury Prot rotation. You're getting a much more rage, you are critting much more, you're attacking faster thanks to Flurry, and you're pressing so many more buttons, which I find so much more exciting and enjoyable than playing Deep Prot. So, let's get into the bread and butter of the spec, talk about the talents and why they are useful, and also a few options at the end that you can customise to suit yourself and your situation. Start off with 5 points in cruelty, this is more threat from the crits and more flurries as well. Unbridled Wrath More rage to spend on your abilities and those fat juicy bloodthirsts. 5 points in improved battle shout, more attack power equals more threat. This however can be swapped for points in improved demoralizing shout, but only if there is going to be a warrior in your group buffing you with improved battle shout. Also, try to take into account the three-piece Wrath Set bonus which increases your attack power of Battle Shout. Personally, in my raids, I take the Battle Shout because in most of my gear sets I do have three-piece Wrath and I get another warrior to run Improved Demoralizing Shout. Five points in Enrage. You will be getting crit, but this means a massive increase to damage and threat. Five points in Dual Wield Specialization. More damage, more threat. One point in Death Wish. This is an insane threat increase when used, but needs to be used with caution as you will take more damage. Use it when you know you can get away with it, and there are certain times where this is very useful. Bosses like Shazra don't deal that much damage to the tank, and your raid love to blast this boss. Death Wish can be an ability that increases your threat massively and allows you to hold aggro. Another good example is Veilstraz. On Veilstraz, I pop Recklessness and Death Wish, which gives me insane threat generation. I only do this because I know my healers can handle it and they know I'm going to do it. Don't pop big threat cooldowns like Recklessness and Death Wish and expect to survive when you pop them out of the blue. Communicate with your healers and work together and let them know when you have to go balls out for that big threat increase. 5 points in Flurry. This is the absolute bread and butter of the Fury Prot tank in spec. Flurry allows you to pump out ridiculous amounts of heroic strikes. It massively increases the value of crit in your threat setup, and in turn, increases your rage generation greatly. Bloodthirst. This is going to be one of the primary abilities in your rotation. Try and press it whenever you can, and most of all, enjoy the big numbers. This completes our talents in the Fury Tree. We are now going to step into the Protection Tree. 5 points in Shield Specialization. We are mainly picking this up so we can get shield block later down the line. You will be using your shield a lot. Like I said before, the aim of Fury Pro is to gain a threat lead. When you've done this, mitigate. 3 points in toughness. Armor is one of your best defensive stats. 2 points in improved blood rage. More rage is always nice, but ultimately we are taking this to reach last stand. 5 points in defiance. This is a big increase to your threat. 1 point in improved shield block. Only 1 point is necessary here. Bosses have a 2.5 second attack speed and shield block lasts 5 seconds. This means the bosses will get 2 attacks off during shield block. The only exception for this rule is if a boss thrashes, which causes them to do multiple attacks, or if a boss parries your attack and resets their swing timer, although this is not enough of a reason to take extra charges in shield block. But you can use your extra points at the end to put them in here if you would like to try it out. 1 point in last stand. This is an amazing defensive cooldown. At this point, you have 2 extra talent points to be used however you see fit. I prefer to take toughness for extra armor, but here are some other options that you might want to take. 2 points in improved taunt. This can be very useful on raid trash and certain bosses like Even Rock and Flame Go. That's because lots of taunts are going out here, and maybe 2 seconds on a taunt could save a wipe. 2 points in heroic strike. This is an extremely solid choice if you find your raid is doing incredible damage and your threat is teetering on the edge. This talent doesn't look like much, but on certain bosses I have cast well above 50 heroic strikes. Two talent points in heroic strike equates to over 100 rage. 
This converts into around 8 extra heroic strikes, so that's a lot of extra threat you're gaining there, and the talent doesn't look like it does that much, but it really does. That concludes the talent section of this guide, let's take a look at gear and stats. The first thing that's important to understand is that there is no such thing as abyss list for a tank. You need to wear as much threat gear as possible so that you always have threat on whatever boss you're tanking. If you wear too much threat gear, you will be very squishy and you'll die or cause extra unnecessary stress on your healers. Alternatively, if you wear too much mitigation gear, you won't be able to get threat on the boss, so nothing will be hitting you and you will be mitigating nothing. Just follow this simple rule. Always have threat on the boss and take as little damage as possible. This can only be achieved through trial and error. Change your gear sets up constantly, I always am. Go to raid and wear whatever you think is appropriate. Keep your eyes on the threat meter. If you are very close to losing threat or DPS or pulling aggro, it's simple, you need to wear more threat gear. But if you're looking at the threat meter and you're very high on the threat and your next DPS is miles away, you need to put on more mitigation gear. It's not a competition about what tank can do the most damage. At that point, you're gimping your raid and making it harder than it needs to be. Every raid is different and every raid team is made up of different skill levels of players. If you want to be the best tank for your raid group, you need to assess that situation and equip gear for that raid. Don't get caught up in chasing logs as a tank, I've done it myself and ultimately being the best tank for your raid scenario is more enjoyable and more rewarding and your guild will thank you for it. Let's dive in to the stat priorities for a tank threat wise and mitigation wise. I'm also going to show you the gear sets that I use in different situations and why they are tailored to suit those situations. Threat gear priorities. Weapon skill. Weapon skill is the first thing that you should look at and will make the biggest difference to your threat gain. Once you reach 305 weapon skill, you will gain 3% hit towards a level 63 boss. This is a massive threat increase. Once you reach 308 weapon skill, you are then classed as glancing blow capped. Glancing blows are hard to explain, but they basically reduce the damage that your auto attacks deal. When you are at 308 weapon skill, there is a massive drop off to the effect that weapon skill gives to glancing blows. Don't worry too much about hitting 308, but make it a priority that you hit 305 weapon skill for that 3% hit increase. If you can get to 308 through items like Maladath, then brilliant. Racial skills like the Human Sword and Mace skill, and also the Orc Axe skill, also contribute to this skill level. Items like Edgemaster's Handguards and also Aged Core Leather Gloves allow you to reach 305 weapon skill even if you don't have a racial. But that's if you've got 3k gold to spare. Hit Cap Hit Cap is the next most important to achieve on the threat list. The hit cap for a level 63 boss is 9%. If you have 305 weapon skill, this will be 6%. The easiest place to pick up extra hit rating is on your rings and necklace. Band of Acuria from Ragnaros offers valuable hit and valuable stamina and agility. The Anixia Tooth Pendant also offers agility and stamina and hit. Look for items like this to achieve your hit cap. The Ring from Alterac Valley Exalted also offers stamina, crit and hit. It's a good choice, but very annoying to get. The Lionheart Helmet, while very expensive, offers fantastic hit and crit, but with a drawback, it doesn't have any stamina, which does not make this optimal for tanking, but definitely a choice and a very nice aggressive piece of gear. Crit and Agility. This is the next most important on the stat priority. Agility will give you a mitigation benefit through dodge as well as giving you crit. It takes a warrior 20 agility to get one critical strike chance. Critical strike will give you a massive increase to threat through the actual critical strikes and also give you a huge increase to threat through your flurry uptime. Having increased flurry uptime will increase the amount of heroic strikes that you get to put into the boss. Strength and attack power. These stats will just make you hit harder and will scale very well with your bloodthirst which is going to be one of the main abilities you use to gain massive threat. Mitigation stats. Stamina and Armor Stamina and Armor go hand in hand and are the best mitigation stats. You will find a lot of this on the set pieces like the Might and the Wrath gear. Don't be afraid to equip a few pieces of male gear when the time is right. 
on certain bosses like Veilstras where you need a massive amount of threat, items like the Savage Glad Chain are just too valuable threat-wise to lose. That being said, don't go into raid wearing full male gear and expect to survive, you're gonna get destroyed. Be sensible and only wear a piece of mail if it's really necessary. A lot of the time, it's not. Another mail item that is worth wearing are the wrist guards of the True Flight. These drop from Major Domo and have a lot of stamina, agility, and they have hit on them as well, so they are a very valuable threat item. And you can afford to lose armor here, considering they are a small piece and you don't actually lose that much compared to a plate piece. Here are a few of my armor sets. I'm going to be talking through what I use them for and any key items in the set that really make it work. This is my threat priority set. This is my set that has the least mitigation but the most threat output. I use this set on Shazra because the boss dies very quickly and threat is important. Our guild also pops recklessness on this boss so my threat needs to be solid. The boss also doesn't deal very much damage to me as a tank so I can get away with being slightly squishier and not die. I use the Lionheart Helm here which is a very aggressive piece and gives me very nice threat stats. I also use the Savage Gladiator Chain which gives me very good threat stats but causes me to lose some armor, which I'm okay to do on certain fights. Full Mitigation Set This is my full mitigation set, which utilizes mainly stamina, armor, and agility. There are also items here which give me threat. I have worked out how much threat I need for certain bosses where I need more mitigation. You will need to do the same. Try pieces of gear, assess your threat, and see what you need for certain bosses. I use this set for bosses like Chromagus and Nefarian, where high damage can be dealt to me and I need to survive. Another good boss example is Broodlord Lashlayer. He can do incredible damage, and this set helps me survive. The Helm of Endless Rage, Drake Talon Pauldrons, and the Gauntlet of Might are fantastic items that offer a lot of mitigation stats, but also threat stats alongside them. They are hard to beat. I also make sure that I am hit capped, which is 6% for me as a human using swords in all of my gear sets, even the mitigation sets. My 25 crit tank set. This is a very middle line tank set. 25% crit is a good place to aim as a fury tank. You need a certain amount of crit to ensure you are keeping flurry up most of the time. 25% is a good margin to aim for. Currently in this gear set I am below 25% crit, but using an elixir of the mongoose will easily put me up to where I need to be. Additional ray buffs on top of that will take me over, so with this gear set I feel like my threat is very comfortable and it is a very flexible set that I can use on multiple bosses. I could put items on, like the Savage Gladiator chain, but I have opted not to. This is basically my multi-purpose set. Again, the Drake Talon Pauldrons and the Helm of Endless Rage are key items in this set that offer me both mitigation and threat stats. The Dragon Breath Hand Cannon is also a really nice piece that offers up crit and stamina. Cloak of the Shrouded Mists is also a brilliant item that offers up crit and stamina. Fire Resistance Set In this set, I have aimed to achieve as much fire resistance as possible, while also maintaining stamina, armor, and enough threat to keep the bosses on me. Hiccup is still a top priority here, and this is where weapon skill makes it much easier if you have that extra 3% hit from 305 weapon skill on your chosen weapon. Dark Iron Helm and Legs are fantastic pieces here, especially when enchanted with the 20 fire resistance Librum, the Librum of Resilience. The Draconian Deflector is a fantastic shield to match up with this set as it has fire resistance on it as well. The Shoulders of Wrath and the Chest of Wrath also have really nice fire resistance on them as well. AoE Tanking Set This set is very gimmicky and its uses are limited. The main use for it in Raid is on Gar in Molten Core. In our Raid team, I tank every single ad on the Gar encounter. To make this easier for myself, I have made a set purely based on block chance. The reason why I based it on block chance is because I am using the force reactive disc. Every time I block with that shield, it sends out a charge that hits all enemies around me and damages them in a big AoE. On that fight, I also use consumables like oil of immolation and a sapper charge to get nice threat on the ads. A thorium shield spike also increases the further damage I do when I block an attack. I am just looking for block chance mainly on all pieces of gear here and any defensive stat. Crit or attack power isn't really a goal here as I am not looking to generate threat through my usual attacks 
just purely from blocks and other cheesy factors. Styline's Impending Scarab is a really nice item here that offers a ridiculous amount of block chance. Also, my other trinket, Heart of the Scale, which drops from the last boss in Lower Blackrock Spire, gives me fire resistance and also deals 20 fire damage to anyone that strikes me. All the adds are attacking me here, so they are just generating threat for themselves. This set can also be a really nice set for tanking dungeons. You often get situations in dungeons where there are loads of mobs running all over the place. Take for example Stratholm Undead where there are plenty of non-elite undead mobs. All of those attacking you. If you block, send out pulses from your force reactive disc. It's going to generate a lot of threat and it's hard to beat that aggro. But as I said, the uses of this set are very limited and very cheesy. This concludes all of my gear sets. Please don't copy these purely for the fact that these are tailored for my raid and the environments that I play in. Your situations will be very different. You need to build your own gear sets suited for those environments and work on them personally. Like I said, if you need more threat, you know what to do. If you have too much threat, you also know what to do. If you have any questions about gear or what you should be wearing, thoughts on certain items, please drop into my stream. I am happy to talk about this anytime. A few extra important items that I think are worth mentioning. Obviously, Thunder Fury is a massive improvement to your threat. The proc not only gives you threat from the damage, but also gives you mitigation from the extra 20% attack speed slow that it produces on bosses. This is 10% more than a Thunderclap, so it's better than Thunderclap. Diamond Flask. This flask is obtained through the Sunken Temple level 50 warrior class quest. It provides 75 strength which turns into 150 attack power and lasts a minute. This is a huge threat boost. This should be used on every boss fight where available. Usually for threat, I try and keep Black Hand's Breath for crit and Diamond Flask in my trinket sets. I swap out the Diamond Flask for Hand of Justice whenever it's on cooldown. I prefer to use Black Hand's Breath over Hand of Justice as I feel crit is more valuable for keeping my flurry up time solid. Maladath is another very important item that I use. I am lucky enough to have one of these items, not everyone will be, but this really allows me to generate more threat. This takes me to the 308 weapon skill cap, which really reduces the penalty from glancing blows, and then allows me to deal more threat. To put this into perspective on how important it is, I feel like I got more of a threat increase when I got Maladath than when I got Thunder Fury. I got the Maladath first and I was using Quelserar in the main hand with Maladath in the off hand. When I got the Thunder Fury, obviously I felt the impact of it, but I felt more of an impact to be honest with the Maladath. Next, we are going to talk about the playstyle of Fury Pro. This is where the real skill comes into play and it's your time to shine. On most bosses, I like to start with dual wield. This allows me to get the most threat possible and then swap over to a shield later when I feel I have gained a comfortable threat lead. There are however some bosses where I do like to start with a shield out. Some of these bosses include Broodlord, Flamegore and Ebonrock, and Nefarian. The reason why I start with a shield out on these bosses is because there is a positional element to them where other players have to move. Or, I have to move with the boss for a period of time where I can't get a heal. This ensures that I will survive in that time if we get unlucky with a crit or the boss might thrash me. I'm just much more likely to survive if I've got a shield out. Play smart, react to the situation. If you know you're not going to get a heal, go defensive, get your shield out and survive it. The Rotation Opening sequence of the fight. If anything is going to go wrong, it's at the start of the boss fight. If you get a few parries or misses and the DPS go hard straight away, the boss is going to spin around like a Beyblade and you ain't going to get aggro. Something that I like to do at the start of a boss that I feel really helps me is not to wait for that blood first to start off with. Sometimes going for a cheaper ability like Heroic Strike or Sunder can really help you get that snap aggro at the start and then you can transition into a more standard rotational priority. Starting on a boss, I will try and get one Heroic Strike and one Sunder at the start just for initial aggro. As soon as that's gone out and I feel comfortable with the threat, I will then move in to my proper rotation. When you move over to the proper rotation, try and keep Heroic Strike active all of the time. Because you have a lot of crit, attack power, and the boss is hitting you, giving you extra rage, you should be able to maintain constant uptime on Heroic Strike while also following through with the second rotation. The priority goes as follows. Try and keep Blood First on constant cooldown. Press Revenge whenever it is available. Press Under Armour whenever you are on an excessive amount of rage and both of those abilities aren't available to use. 
one neat little trick with heroic strike is that while the action is queued, your offhand cannot miss as long as you are at the yellow hit cap, which is 9% or 6% with 305 weapon skill. This really allows you to generate a lot of extra rage and a massive amount of threat. If, however, you aren't getting as much rage as you'd hoped due to a bad RNG through hits, ease up on the heroic strike to allow that bloodthirst to go through. That's going to generate so much threat and you need bloodthirst to hit. Threat secured. Once you feel like you have sufficient enough threat on the boss, pull out your shield and start using shield block in the rotation. This should take place after revenge and bloodthirst. Only do this if you are at at least a 30% threat lead and the boss doesn't have any mechanics that knock you back and reduce your threat. Examples of this are Anixia and Broodlord Lashlayer. They both have a knockback effect which reduces your threat. Doing this will really smooth out the damage you take and allow the healers to have a lot of breathing room. If for some reason the DPS start catching you up and chasing you down on the threat meter, it is a simple matter of pulling out your dual wield set and blasting the DPS some more. Get that threat back up there and if you have the time, bring your shield back out when you're comfortable and mitigate again. At this point, it's very worth mentioning debuffs like Sunder Armor and Demoralizing Shout. Sunder Armor, when fully stacked up, offers over a 20% physical damage increase to a boss. This is not just a task for the tanks though. Communicate with your Fury Warrior DPS in the raid and make sure that they are pressing one Sunder Armor as their first cast on every boss. This will mean that the boss instantly goes up to 5 stacks of Sunder Armor. It will make your job building threat on the boss at the early stages of the fight much easier. But ultimately, if the DPS aren't doing it, then you need to because it's an absolute threat priority. Demoralizing Shout is a very important debuff to keep up on all bosses. Demoralizing Shout is a very deceptive ability because 134 attack power doesn't seem like a lot. Some bosses have certain abilities that scale directly off attack power. Broodlord Lashlayer is a fantastic example of this. Using Demoralizing Shout on him will greatly reduce the damage his Mortal Strike does, which is known to be one of the most lethal abilities inside a Blackwind Lair. Without going into all of the maths, on a typical boss that has Curse of Recklessness on it, and a 5 out of 5 talented Demoralizing Shout, you get about a 20% damage reduction, which is massive. Don't let Demoralizing Shout fall off, and make sure you have an off tank assigned and talented to keep up Demo Shout. It will save your ass. Consumables You need to be careful as a tank popping consumables. There is a buff cap in Vanilla WoW, which is 32 buffs. Popping too many consumables could cause you to lose world buffs. We can't take this as an advantage. It's an excuse to save some gold. And also means we only need to be really popping things that are imperative for a fight and also imperative for a threat. At the very least, always use an Elixir of the Mongoose and something to give you strength like Juju Power or Elixir of the Giants. Any fight that has an AoE factor like tanking all of the adds on Gar, an Oil of Immolation is always a really good shout. Using an attack power consumable like Winterfall Firewater or Juju Might is always a really good idea on threat heavy fights like Balestraz. Greater Stone Shield Potion. This, as a Fury Pro tank, is one of your most important consumables. It gives you 2000 armor for 2 minutes which nearly lasts all boss fights and if it falls off, you can pop another one because the cooldown is 2 minutes. This gives you back basically all the armor that you've lost from taking the shield off. GG. I make sure I have a stone shield potion up for every single fight in Blackwing Lair. My gear is at the stage now where I don't require them in Molten Core anymore, which is really nice. Unfortunately, on certain fights, you can't pop a stone shield potion. Fights like Gehenna's, where you could get stunned, you need to pop a free action potion so you're able to tank properly. You're not going to be able to pop a stone shield potion, you just have to deal with it. On fights like this, where the stone shield potion is down, just be aware and make sure that you're ready to bring out your shield when you have threat just in case something goes wrong and you take a crit. But that's where the beauty of caring about your gear sets comes into play. If you know you can't wear a stone shield potion and you have to use a free action potion, just wear a more mitigation based set and continue with the fight as normal and you'll be fine. Gift of Arthas. This is a nice little consumable that can help boost the DPS of your melees in the raid. Use it if you have space in your buff cap. Buff food. If you have space in your buff cap, use some buff food. 
Really good options are the Squid, which give 10 agility, Blessed Sunfruit, which are very cheap and can be bought from the Argent Dawn Quartermaster at Revered and they give 10 strength, and lastly, Smoked Desert Dumplings, which are the premium option. Weapon Stones are another really nice consumable to add to your threat. Personally, I do not bother with Elemental Sharpening Stones that add 2% crit, as I feel they are too expensive and don't offer enough of an upgrade over the Dense Sharpening Stones or Dense Weight Stones. The last consumable which I'm going to mention is the Gordok Green Grog. This can be obtained by completing a Diamol North Tribute Run. Once you have finished the run, you go back to the start and there will be an Ogre waiting there which can sell you some of this brew. That finishes off the consumable list we're going to talk about today. The next little thing I'd like to quickly mention is the weapon setup. Ideally, you want to have your fastest weapon in the main hand. The reason for this is so that you can get more heroic strikes off on the boss. Heroic Strike and Bloodthirst are not based off the weapon's damage. Heroic Strike technically is, but it comes in on the next weapon swing and adds a fixed amount of damage to the attack. That means you won't achieve a better threat per second if you have a slower weapon in the main hand using Heroic Strike. You will actually achieve a worse threat per second. Counteractively, you also want to have a slower weapon in your offhand. The reason for this is if you have a faster weapon in your offhand, it's going to be swinging a lot quicker and consuming flurry charges. If you have a slower weapon in your offhand, it's going to consume less flurry charges and allow more flurry charges to go through on the main hand. This means, on a less amount of crits, you will get more flurry charges going through on the main hand, giving you more heroic strikes going through in a set period of time. This can really help you when you get into a crit-starved situation. Just remember to use weapons that fit into your race's weapon skill and try and make those weapons fit around that rule of weapon speed. That's going to conclude our ultimate Fury Prot tanking guide. Tailoring these gear sets really allows me to dig deep into the game and learn things about the game that I didn't know before. I really hope you enjoyed this guide and I had a lot of fun making it. Let me know what tips and tricks you have learned below in the comments. And be sure to join the stream. I'm always open to talk about warrior tanking and questions. So I look forward to seeing you there. So until next time, thank you very much. Keep on blasting.